Today, I'm going to show you how to create Phoenix Ashes. The things you'll need to create our Phoenix Ashes is one glass bottle, and I have chose one that has the glass ball stopper. We're going to use some activated charcoal or carbon, and I'm using the kind that you would use in a fish tank. We are going to use a heat gun, and if you don't have one of those, you can use a hairdryer or even an open flame like a candle, very carefully with adult supervision. I have some ashes from my fireplace. I also have two different colors of brown permanent markers. I have some cellophane treat bags in an assortment of colors. The main ones we're looking for is yellow, orange, and red. But if you can't find those, we can use a clear one and some permanent markers. I have a glass container and a spoon for mixing, as well as some jute twine, our hot glue gun with glue and scissors, as well as our label printed on sticker paper, and the link for this is in the description down below. Let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is mix our Phoenix ashes. And I'm basing these ashes off of the ones that you can see in Chamber of Secrets. So when Fox bursts into flames and then is reborn from the ashes, if you really pay attention to those ashes, they're very, very dark in color. They're almost completely black. There's just a little bit of some lighter tones in there, like some gray in that. Now, which is completely opposite from what you get when you are just burning wood or paper or something like that. You get this very light gray ashy color and um, it's definitely not like Phoenix ashes. So to get the dark color and that ash consistency, we're actually gonna use the charcoal that you would use for a fish tank. And I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this. Let me put a little bit on here. So as you can see, this has a really great quality that almost looks like the ashes in Chamber of Secrets, but I want to add a little bit of real ash just to give it a little bit more of that burnt look. Um, so we get the really great texture and color with this, but I want to add just a little bit of the regular ashes to really make it look like true Phoenix ashes. So to do that, all I'm going to do is dump some of the charcoal in here. It's very important that you get the fish charcoal that isn't in like little pellets. You want the kind that is natural looking like this, where it's actually like pieces of charcoal or carbon. And as you can see, you are gonna get a little bit of like a carbony smoke and that's okay. So I've got some of my uh, charcoal in here and I really just wanna add a very, very little bit of our ashes in here. So again, just like when we're mixing color in with things, start with a little. We can always add more. You really can't take it away besides adding more of the charcoal to get it to be the consistency you want it to be. Because I still would like this to be very dark in color. I just want to add just a little bit of the lighter coloring that we get with um, a bigger chunk of wood or something. I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. But I just want to get that little bit of lighter color just from like the little burnt embers of the ashes. Okay. So right now we have an overall dark color with just a little bit of the ash and I actually think I like that. And I'm not sure if that's enough to fill the bottle and if it's not it'll be easy enough for us to make more. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and fill my bottle in case I need to make some more. That way I've got all of my ingredients right in front of me and we can go from there. So I'm gonna very carefully attempt to pour these in here. You know what, I'm actually gonna put a piece of paper underneath of it. Okay, I grabbed a piece of just regular printer paper and I'm gonna actually put that under this just in case any of it spills over, we'll be able to just dump it right back in. And then all we're gonna do is very carefully attempt to fill yeah. Okay, so we're going to just try to help them in with our hand here. So as you can see, that's going to be real messy, but it'll wash off. Okay, so it's almost all the way full, and I think I actually want to fill this one. Well, maybe not. 
I do kind of like that you can kind of shake it around in there. So I think that's actually good. I think I'm going to leave it at that. But as you guys can see, when we mixed in the ash, we actually got a really great texture addition that just kind of helped stand the darker parts out. So I think that looks really nice. And some of you may tell me that you want to add glitter. By all means, go ahead. But if you actually look at the ash, it, it is not glittery. Um, it, it is like an ash. So I want to make sure I keep it that way. But if you want to add glitter to yours, by all means, go right ahead. This is everyone's interpretation of whatever they think the ash looks like. But for me, I want to keep it more um, natural and authentic looking. But you could definitely throw some black glitter in here. Okay, so now that we have our ashes in the bottle, before we cap it up, I want to embellish the top of this stopper. So I'm going to set these aside. And we're going to use some of our cellophane bags. Now, these are Wilton bags, but I got them at Walmart, and they were $1.97 for 30 of these bags. So these are very affordable. But if you can't get your hands on these that have the nice assortment of colors, you could use a clear cellophane bag. And cellophane is not the same as a sandwich bag. So just make sure you look. Most treat bags are actually a cellophane. But you want um, the cellophane plastic that's a little bit more crisp than what a... Uh, sandwich bag is because we're going to use the heat gun to kind of manipulate it a little bit. Um, but if you don't have the colors, all you have to do with the clear is take a permanent marker. So whether that's a Sharpie or other brand of permanent marker, and you can actually just color it to be that solid color and you'll get the same effect. So whether you do a variegation of yellow, orange, and red, or whether you do just red, however you want to do it, you can definitely get the same effect with just a clear cellophane, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do it with the different colors. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take our bags, and I am actually going to cut the bottom of it off so that it will open up a little bit more. And then at this point, you could slice an edge. So that leaves us with this nice sheet of cellophane. And at this point, I'm going to basically make circles in different sizes in these three different colors, and then I will show you what we're going to do from there. So the easiest way to cut the different size circles that we want is to fold your bag in half, fold it in half again, and fold it again into kind of this triangle. And then all we're going to do is cut a circle. However, I'm not gonna make mine a complete circle. I kind of wanna make the edges a little jagged so that they kind of mimic flames. And you could go as deep on this or as shallow on this as you would like. So I'm going to do it so that my red is the tallest flame and you're really only gonna see a little bit of the red. We're gonna see more of the yellow and the orange because they are the base colors. And you can even just cut in on some of these separate layers as well. So once we've done that, we can open it up. And as you can see, we get a circle that has a jagged, flamey edge on it. And you can make this as big or as little as you'd like. And I'm going to do the same thing in smaller sizes with the orange and the yellow. Okay, so I have cut my yellow the smallest, my orange the next size up, and then my red the biggest, and I'm going to center them up so that they're roughly in the middle of each other, and then we're going to fold it in half, and none of these folds will stay. Once we heat it up, all that will kind of go away, and we're going to, again, fold it one more time. So as you can see, we're starting to get a little bit of like a flame look here. And I'm going to fold it one more time. Now, I'm going to cut a very, very small edge here. Because when we open this up, it should give us an opening for us to put our cork through. So we can then push this through. And if the hole's too small, it's perfectly fine. It actually is better that way. And you're just going to pull that up. And then we're going to do the same thing with the orange. As well as the yellow. Now, 
From here, I'm going to put a little bit of my hot glue around here just to kind of tack this a little bit. You really don't have to do this, but I find that it helps the flame just kind of keep its shape a little bit easier while you're heating it up. So all I did was just do a rough little squiggle around the edges. And all I'm gonna do is lift the red up and I'm gonna kind of give it a squeeze. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Now you'll notice that the heat from that already kind of made the orange adhere on the other side. So I'm just gonna add a couple more drops to the red. And again, lift this up and squeeze. And it's going to be hot, so please be careful. My hands at this point are completely numb to a hot glue gun, which I feel like is the true sign of a crafter. If you can take hot glue like it's nothing, you're golden. All right, so as you can see, we kind of have a start. You could definitely leave it like this, but I kind of feel like when we add the heat, it gives it a better dimension and layer and a little bit more of a realistic look. So at this point, we're going to take our heat gun. Again, please be careful. These are not very expensive, but they do put off a whole lot of heat and they are very useful. You guys know I use them all the time. Um, I highly recommend you pick one up. I think that they have multiple purposes. You can use it to make gift baskets because that would use a uh, shrink wrap or a type of cellophane. You can use it to help things dry. You can use it to re-wet your wax seals to make it drip better. Um, anything like that. So I just love my heat gun and I use it for a lot of different purposes, but it really comes in handy here. Now, if you don't have a heat gun, like I said, you could use a hair dryer. It's just going to take you a lot longer. And then if you're very careful, if you light a candle and very carefully hover it over so that the heat of the flame um, hits just the edge, you don't want the actual flame to hit it, just the heat from it, you can actually start to pull and get a very similar effect with the candle. But you just have to be very, very careful um, because it is a candle and an open flame. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this with some heat and show you guys how we're going to transform it into a more realistic looking flame. So start at the base first. And as you can see, it starts to kind of like melt up. And that's gonna help adhere it down even more as well. Now you can see it starts to go very melty very fast once it gets to a certain temperature. So at that point, you can stop it and kind of mess with your flames to get them to the shape that you'd like them to be. And then you can hit it with the heat again. And then again, when you get to a certain point, you can kind of do some pulling and twisting to just start to form your flame. And I actually think I want a little less red in here. And if you just want a little less red, go in and start cutting out some of your embers. And that way you kind of can see a little bit more of the orange and the yellow, and then just continue to heat and play with it. Okay, so once you get done and you get it to a point that you're happy with, then I'm actually going to take my permanent markers and I have a light brown and a dark brown. And I'm going to go through and just kind of do some quick little strokes on here because I feel like it gives it more of a real flame look. It helps add a little bit of movement and a little bit more depth. So I go in with a lighter color first and make sure you hit the inside too. and then I'm gonna hit the darker color. And as you can see, it just kinda adds a more realistic effect to it. 
So at this point, I can then take my little flame stopper here and I can put it right in my bottle. Now I've noticed that this one is a little bit loose and I wanna make sure that it doesn't wobble around. So I'm actually going to put just a little bit of hot glue just around the top here so that when I put it in, it won't wobble around. And now I'm gonna take my jute twine and we're going to wrap the neck of the bottle just like we have dozens and dozens of bottles before. So if you're not sure how to wrap this, I'll go ahead and put a card up above. Okay, so now that I have the neck of my bottle wrapped, I'm actually going to use a lighter like I've done in the past. And we are just going to very, very, very carefully singe off some of the little hairs. And it also kind of gives the jute twine a little bit more of an aged look but just be really careful that you don't set your plastic on fire. And now that we have our jute twine singed, we can decide which side we like the best. So I actually think that's the side I like the best. So I'm just gonna rotate my jute twine so that the back is to the back. Then we're gonna take our label printed on sticker paper. And again, I go around the outside edge with a matching marker just to give it a more finished look. And we're going to peel the backing paper off. And then we are going to place this on our bottle. See, is that straight? And then rub it down. And once we get our label on, there you have it, our Phoenix Ashes. Now, in Harry Potter, they never actually say that the ashes can be used in a potion or to heal or anything like that. But if you actually look at the mythical qualities of Phoenix Ashes in Roman literature, it states that you could actually use the Phoenix Ashes in a resurrection potion. So I feel like these ashes have a resurrection property. So just like the Phoenix that is able to burst into flames and rise from the ashes born again, you could use these ashes to essentially rise from the ashes yourself and be born again. This is a great addition to our Phoenix collection that we now have, which includes the Phoenix Feathers, Phoenix Tears, and now Phoenix Ashes. And it's also a great addition to our Potion Prop collection you've been making along the way. So if you guys like this video, give me the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, and we will catch you guys later. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.